Okay, all right, uh, let's uh, deck tech for, let's start the deck tech for, um, for Luris folk. Okay, so, you know, I've, I've been playing a bit with, uh, I mean, I've been playing a lot with uh, Civilian, and I've actually recorded a few leagues. Now, I, I've recorded this one uh, after all of these, and I haven't actually uploaded um, any of the, uh, you know, any of my Civilian leagues yet. I'm at least, I'm at least uploading the, at least, you know, the 5-0 league is going to come up before this one, but I'm not sure about the other three. Um, I'll probably put up, I probably put up at least one other, I'm guessing, before this one. Um, I'm trying to, like, you know, I mean, uh, so, no, yeah, anyway, like, so this will definitely come up, well, maybe I don't want to spoil it, because I, I, I may want to put these out of order for some reason. I don't know why necessarily I can think of, but, um, so anyway, look, long story short, um, in both recorded and unrecorded matches, I've been having kind of mediocre results overall with Svelin. And it's weird because literally the first full league I played with it, I went, uh, I think it was the first full league I played with it, I went uh, I went 5-0, and it seemed nuts in those leagues. But, I don't know, part of it might be maybe maybe more and more Merfolk decks are like floating around, and people just don't like getting juked by Merfolk. And honestly, Svelin can be dealt with. I see Flame Slash in the main more. Part of it could have been inspired by me. I've always been a believer in Flame Slash. My Obosh deck is better set up than most of the deal with feeling because of that. The uh, indestructibility can be an issue, but a lot of decks play a lot of removal anyway, and those are always usually that's always usually the bigger challenge to deal with like lots of removal. Um, although our, although this but my more controlling decks have never really never really been juked as hard by uh, by removal because I usually play more of a controlling game and uh, more of a mid rangey. I, I go even more hard hardcore on the mid range typically when I'm in the Merfolk strategy. Anyway, look bottoms you know bottom line. Um, I, let's see, let's see about what, about what Luris can do for us, because here's the thing, look, you can't guarantee that you're going to win every single match, but the frustrating thing for me is a lot of the, uh, a lot of the matches I've been having with Svelin, you know, on, on and off camera have just been, um, I've been flooding out a lot, and even with, like, even with, like, eight, eight, like, uh, like I tried one, I tried one with Mistress Factory, believe it or not, like, um, and I know I actually tried Mistress Factory and, uh, and, um, yeah, I tried, and I don't, I don't know why I have eight. I guess, I guess I never sold my legacy ones from way back when. That's probably what happened. And then I, I just bought these when I saw these uh, come out in Modern Horizons two, and I didn't, really, I forgot that I already had. I never sold the legacy ones, I guess, because I don't think, the, I think these are in my trade binder, and the boss just never want to buy it. It's just not worth it, I guess. But anyway, um, yeah. So I don't know if I'm, if I'm putting up the Mistress Factory League, but you know, I did, I did actually kind of like it somewhat, um, because it does. It does. It did pump the uh, mutable, and with eight man lands, um, you know, and 12, uh, 12 blue sources, um, I at least, I at least kind of solved the gas issue somewhat. Um, you know, I mean, pumping a mutable was surprisingly relevant. Of course, the biggest issue there, you might, you know, um, unsurprisingly, was just going down to twelve blue sources. Believe it or not, though, like I may have commented, like if if I if I end up uploading that video, like. In Legacy, for the longest time, they played Wasteland, 8-4 Wastelands, 4 Mutables, 12 blue sources, and it was fine. And I even played Mistress Factory for a while, and it was fine with, you know, 4 Mistress Factory, 4 Mutable. Um, but, you know, uh, at the end of the day, though, I mean, the problem, yeah, that was the biggest problem there. I did, I mean, like, I, I could have gone back to, to Fairy Conclave, and actually, I was about to go back to Fairy Conclave, um, you know, my go-to, my go because that's ultimately kind of what I... What I started to feel like is just like Fairy Conclave is just a bit safer than Factory because it both produces blue and it's a man land. Yeah, it comes into play tap, but you know, it doesn't uh, at least color screw you. Um, I know that, that just got me thinking. You know, like honestly, honestly, like when I was using Creeping Tar Pit, Creeping Tar Pit felt a lot better than Fairy Conclave. Obviously, like you know, if you have the colors, um, Creeping Tar Pit is I think has been recognized as an excellent man land. Um, it's straight unblockable. So, like for example, whereas whereas a fairy conclave is just is just garbage against uh, lingering souls, creeping tar pit is actually amazing. And sometimes that's your best way of getting around lingering souls, because no matter how many they have or how many however they chump blockers they may want to use, they just can't block it. Nothing can block it. So, so that's kind of what got me thinking. Like, man, I don't, I don't want to. I, it's hard for me to go back to fairy conclave now that I've um. Now that I played with uh, Creeping Tarpit so much, Creeping Tarpit is, I really think Creeping Tarpit is so much better. I mean, well, I think everybody knows Creeping Tarpit is so much better than a Fairy Conclave. Um, 
I mean, but I was about to do it because I'm like, yeah, Sevillan, man. Like, you just can't give this up. But I thought to myself, I don't know. There's a lot of games I don't see Sevillan. There's a lot of games where I play it and it either gets countered or it gets removed. Yes, some games it doesn't and it goes nuts. But I just I just thought to myself, I don't know. Maybe we'll try the uh, the Luris build again. Because, because I, you know, there's one thing about the Luris builds that I don't really remember happening that much. And maybe I'm just having, you know, selective fond memories of the past. I don't remember getting mana flooded that much because I think number one I had the eight man lands, and I think eight man lands are they are better against flood than um than the uh, than the castle vantress. The castle vantress I like I liked because they were more free. That's at least one advantage they had over creeping tar pit is that at least they came into play on tap a good chunk of the time. The biggest problem though is that a lot of times by the time you could tap and filter, the game was already lost. I mean yes against like control decks sometimes. Sometimes, you know, like, uh, you, you can try to outgrind them, and you can use that, and yes, and actually, that does that does come up, but, like, against most non-control decks, especially lately, it just feels like if you're mana flooding, you've already kind of lost the game by the time you can scry. What you need is cards that can kind of hold the fort or attack planeswalkers or just do something before you hit five mana, and also just taking an entire turn off to pay five mana is just a little, is just a little bit, um, dubious in a way. Um... And I just love these man lands. I mean, I, I I did I tried like maybe like maybe one practice game with a with a lonely sandbar, and I liked it. But the problem is the problem I've always had with lonely sandbar. It's a, it's a it's a nice card, but like if, if there was only if there was some way I could cycle it both from my hand and from play, like pay one cycling for cycle it from your hand, pay two cycle it from play, kind of like a horizon canopy or something. Yeah, then I'd probably be all over it. The problem is is that since you can only cycle it from your hand, a lot of times when you have to play like one or two early. Um, you still get mana flooded, and then you kind of wish that you could sack those. Um, the problem I have with the Horizon Lands is just that it's just that you end up taking too much damage, and especially in a mono color deck, I just can't really bring myself to play the Horizon Lands again in a, in a mono blue um, because I have no way to actually to actually you know reduce my damage exposure to I mean my life loss exposure to um, to this member, and uh, yeah, I just have no way to prevent my um, yeah exposure to that to that extra life loss. And every extra damage I take off the Horizon Lands, I mean, it just... The problem is, is, is like... It, it, it makes your life total more valuable in the sense that even when even when you're above zero, when you go to down to, like, four life, your dismembers become uncastable. I mean, sometimes against red decks, if you go down to, like, seven life, dismember is uncastable because then you're within a single lightning bolt range. And, you know, so it's just... For me, it's just hard to play the Horizon Lands in... Mono red. Um, honestly, if they printed a black Horizon land, I might try that in Luris Folk because um, because just remember, on average, doesn't end up dealing as much damage. Um, sometimes, and it can even end up dealing no damage if you really want it to uh, because of the uh, because of the ability to sink the black mana into it. Long story short, um, when I realized that probably I had to go back to Fairy Conclave because I, I had so much more success in the past with Fairy Conclave, I have I. Yeah, I, I gotta say, like, you know, definitely my history of playing Castle Vantress is much more limited. Uh, I did jam it a decent amount, but I've just had a lot of success and a lot of experience, and I really, I, for me, I've tested Fairy Conclave enough that I think, I think that's, I, I was realizing I needed to go back to Fairy Conclave, and, you know, just when I realized that, I, I, I still want to explore Luris Folk more. I don't, I don't feel like I've explored it enough, you know? It's a little too early. Like, yeah, I I, I, I think I got several 4-1s. I, I was really impressed, actually. I gotta be honest, I was starting to consistently get 4-1s pretty pretty, uh, pretty consistently. I mean, yes, um, I, I didn't, I never trophied. I trophied once with that Sevillan deck, but that, you know, you can't necessarily take that as, as your, um, as your ultimate evidence, you know? That's not even necessarily good sort of empirical evidence for those who follow me on Twitter and some of the, the sort of, you know, philosophical sort of rants, you could say, whatever, sometimes I have. But, like, even if you're just thinking, like, straight empirical data, like, it's not even clear just by that that uh, the Sevillan's better. Because, yes, I got a 5-0, but I don't think I got a single 4... I don't think I got a single 4-1 with Sevillan after that. Whereas I remember... I I remember, and unfortunately, I'll, I, I, I deleted my notes from Loris because... I don't know, it just gets confusing, and I, I, I gotta find a better way to collect to collect my data, but at the same time, also, that was a different meta, too, so that doesn't necessarily automatically tell me that my deck now, but from what I remember, I, I can't, I can't verify it for sure, but, um, and I think, I think, actually, if you, I think if, in my, uh, Luris Leagues, I went 4-1 a few times, I did go 3 a few times, but I think towards the end, especially in some of the unrecorded, uh, leagues I was having, I remember I felt like I was fairly consistently 4 one um, you know, so, I mean, I suppose I could go back and check the videos to, to see for sure, but um, 
But at the end of the day, uh, I, I'm pretty certain that overall my win rate was better with Luris. And I was starting to think maybe this is even the best deck that I have. Um, I was just so I was just very very impressed with the uh, with the Luris folk build that that I really thought I was onto something. And maybe it's just a little too early to abandon that. Svelin is sweet too. Uh, make no mistake. I, I want. I don't know if it's too early to give up on uh, on Svelin. Uh, Svelin. I don't want to give up on Svelin. I don't. I, I don't think I will completely give up on her. Certainly, if I go back to Yurion folk, which maybe I need to explore that more. Maybe I gave up on that too early too, because actually it was just it was just actually when I was getting started. Um, you know, sort of like exploring uh, Urion folk that that somebody suggested. Uh, well, that I started a few. I just started like mono blue without any companion a little bit, um, and then somebody suggested Luris because I five zeroed I think with a regular mono blue, and essentially it could play Luris even if I just vialed it in. And I totally didn't think of that that I could just play a straight mono blue mana base and then just vial Luris in because I was already like feeling pretty confident about a. A mono blue list that had only two drops, only two drop, uh, you know, creatures. Obviously, Force Negation is a spell, but that doesn't count with Luris. And, you know, so I thought, like, well, wait a minute, that's a good point. You know, like, I could just play Luris in my sideboard. Sometimes I don't get Aether Violence, so sometimes I can never put it into play. But a good enough chunk of the time, even with a straight blue mono mana base, mono blue mana base, I, you know, Luris is still pretty free, actually. Like, I don't even need to play black to play Luris. So, yeah, and that was, I believe, Matt Matic on Twitter. So shout out to Matt Matic. Uh, you, you really started me on this whole uh, Luris folk um, uh, thing. The funny thing is, I think I remember that, um, ironically, uh, you suggested it, but I think, I think, I think if I remember correctly, it took you a little longer to get on that. I guess, I guess you wanted me to, uh, you, you know, I don't mean this by any offense, but I guess you wanted me to be the guinea pig a little bit first to, like, see if it actually worked. And, and there's nothing wrong with that. And, you know, maybe that, anyway, I meant no, absolutely no, just, uh, just, you know, offense by that or anything. That's, um, but you know, that was a, that was a, that was a good suggestion. I thought I was just a little surprised because to me, it just seems so obvious. I was like, Whoa, that's a good suggestion. Um, you know, and I, and I, from what I understand, you did jump on Lars for at least a little bit. Uh, I'm not sure. I haven't, I, I haven't seen your, you know, some of your posts in a while, but I do, um, I do think I do think we're on to something with this uh, Luris folk. So thanks for that suggestion. That that's Matt Maddox's idea, by the way, people. Like I didn't I didn't originally I, I didn't kind of like start playing this on my own. Matt Maddox suggested it, and and that was a good suggestion. So you know I think I'll play with it a little more. Just on a conceptual level, I really do love the Luris package. Let's get into I guess the specifics a little more about you know just see what's going on here. You know what what can we say uh, about this? So. Yeah, so I mean, we're playing the Creeping Tar Pits again. We got the eight man lands. I think that alone. Oh yeah, and I forgot to say, just because in my journey to um, in my journey to like play uh, 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 in my journey to like um, you know, Luris builds that are more like they are right now. I think the first league I played was just straight mono blue with Fairy Conclave. Um, but then I realized that like, wait a minute, there's a blue black man land that is kind of just better than Fairy Conclave if you're playing blue black, you know, Creeping Tar Pit. So I sort of challenged myself to like, you know, well, maybe, I mean, Dark Slick Soars is, you know, pretty free, so maybe I can just play that too, and it helps me cast Dismember too. And then I remember thinking, well, there's Clearwater Pathway, which I kind of went on and off on, but I'm going to I'm gonna play it again here, you know, this time. Um, but I remember thinking, man, this is basically just better than an island as long as you're not facing Blood Moon. So I'm like, this is a pretty free mana base, you know? Like, this is pretty free. I can take zero damage off of the mana base. I can hopefully cast Luris, you know, relatively consistently um you know and i get i get to play a uh i get to play a man land that's objectively just mostly better than fairy conclave this land will sometimes come into play tap but a good chunk of the time it's just going to be a strictly superior uh island at least at least an island that um that uh you know can also activate creeping tarpon and play loris and cast dismember so anyway just i thought there was just a lot to like and that's kind of where i'm where i'm at right here too because because honestly, with just um, the mana base to help support Creeping Tar Pit, um, that this alone is going is, you know, really helped uh, mitigate flooding. Um, and I even played against an opponent playing Luris Folk, and I was really impressed between the Creeping Tar Pits that could that was always a pretty good mana sink. Because that's another thing with Fairy Conclave. If there's like flying blockers or something, sometimes you can't activate it, and then it's not really the mana sink you need it to be. But my opponent, I remember, kept activating it Creeping Tar Pit. He was playing a very similar Luris Folk deck to mine. I, I think he said like he was inspired by by one of the lists I posted. And I remember feeling like, I mean, it, it sucked to lose, but I, I was really surprisingly impressed facing this deck from the other side. Um, I think, I, I forget which deck I, I was using, because I, I, I have these five monocolor decks now. Long story short, I think this is a, I think the mana base alone is um, is more impressive in the sense that the Creeping Tar Pits are just, are just a big upgrade and 
they alone help mitigate flood a lot because it's it's just always useful to activate these things. You always get to like sort of whittle your opponent's life total down as long as you have the mana to sink into them. So not, not always the same thing you can say with Fairy Conclave. Of course, if I was straight mono blue, I'd still play Fairy Conclave, despite how much better Creeping Tarp it is as a man land. And that's simply because, like, you know, you do lose some percentage points to Blood Moon, and, you know, um, I mean, we still are a little bit soft to Blood Moon here. I mean, look, uh, right, like 16, 16 non-basics. On the other hand, if you think about it, we definitely gain a lot of percentage points against uh, Choke, not that we've seen Choke in a long time, and definitely in the meta right now, Blood Moon is a bigger part of the meta than Choke, for sure. But, uh, you know, because basically the basic islands are basically the only basics now. Everything else is a, everything else is not an island. So Choke ain't really going to do much at all against this mana base. Um, but here's another thing, too, that makes me feel more inspired to try this black mana base again. Um, it's that now we have Tide Shaper. Tide Shaper and Spreading Seas. I'm going to try the 8 Seas uh, package uh, main deck. Uh, in Lurus Folk, which we never been able to do before, of course, in the previous uh, Lurus Folk builds. Uh, and I do actually think that, there, that this may have a lot of promise, because I remember one of the only types of decks that I, that I was kind of feeling, like, like you know, kind of wanting to go back to Mono Blue, and, and did make me feel a little soft, um, you know, like like I had some soft spot, was kind of like these Blood Moon decks, Ponta, etc., because it just, it just really felt bad to get locked out um, by Blood Moon when mostly I'm playing Monocolor decks that don't necessarily care about Blood Moon as much. The exception, of course, is Mono Green, in fact, which also only plays four basics and also relies heavily on, on Ink Moth Nexus. So yeah, Blood Moon actually terrorizes this deck even more, despite the fact that it's mono mono color. Um, but yeah, um, <clears throat> but yeah, like uh, I, I, that was a concern. But here, actually, we have Tide Shaper, okay? We have Tide Shaper, we have Spreading Seas, and actually, against the Blood Moon decks, a lot of times you can Tide Shape or you can spread Seas on your uh, on your non bait on, on your mountains while under Blood Moon, and then they turn into islands. And all you really need kind of is two islands to be functional for the most part, uh, ideally with an Aether Vial 2 in the mix. And because actually, I found that when I had spreading Seas a lot of times against the Blood Moon decks, and as long as I had one basic uh, island at least to cast them, um, really I wasn't actually in that in that bad shape. And with four basic islands, I mean we got about the same odds of seeing them as any other card in the deck. You know, which is to say a fairly good odds, not, not like, guaranteed odds or anything, but I just remember feeling like, you know, I just didn't always have Spreading Seas was one issue. So, you know, we still may not necessarily always have a basic island to cast these things, but as long as we have at least one basic island, we can at least, we can at least start getting ourselves out from, from the opponent's Blood Moon with the Tide Shapers and the Spreading Seas. Tide Shapers can get bolted, so of course that could be an issue, but, you know. But, yeah, not all Blood Moon decks necessarily play a heap ton of uh, removal, so there's that too. Um, you know, also there's Force Negation. Um, but yeah, I mean, most of the core of this is pretty much the same uh, as it was before. Uh, then, of course, we've got... Um, but there's actually some other tech, too, that makes me think maybe we are not as, we, we, we're not as soft to Blood Moon as we sometimes have been in the past. Also, you know, Counterspell. Um, I can feel a little more confident to leave up two blue mana because, you know, if I do have to counter something, I'm not setting myself back. Um, also, I have access to six Counterspells, and... I do want to see how this goes. I like conceptually the idea of a uh, of playing six, um, being able to play six counter spells. I, obviously, counter spell is the better of the two, but deprives uh, deprives uh, honestly the second best counter spell we can be playing, in my opinion. Um, so I think supplementing with two more, so we can play six total very similar effects, hard counters, counter anything for two mana. You know, I want to see honestly because there were some matchups like Titan Shift or Amulet Titan where I'm almost always. You know, I mean, hopefully they don't have Cavern of Souls, but even even so, sometimes I can hit, like, a Pact, or I can hit, like, a... I don't know. Or I can hit a Dryad or something. I don't know. Um, unless they name Dryad, but... You know, so sometimes they can name Dryad Balance and name the name uh, Giant. But a lot of times they uh, they save it. They save the uh, Cavern of Souls until, for the, until the Giant, so you can maybe hit a Dryad. But anyway, long story short, um, card, card is flexible enough that... That uh, I I am definitely willing to give it a shot as a two of in uh, in this deck sideboard, but also Ratchet Bomb um, could help because you know I can keep I can tick Ratchet Bomb up to three and maybe take care of uh, Blood Moon that way even under Blood Moon even if I have absolutely no no basics and you know I, I can't always do that sometimes they might have artifact removal or something removal to take care of it but anyway um, you know and I guess I'm like since I'm basically done talking about the sideboard I hit the counter magic I hit Ratchet Bomb, you know, Chalice, I, I don't know that I really need to say much more about it other than that now that we've got these, like, Waterfall decks that cascade into 
crashing footfalls like the whole like basically that's the only card that they cascade into because they play fire and ice and stomp and sometimes dead gone as their one man removal spell uh it's just uh that deck is kind of like it's kind of mean and and I've, I've i've noticed actually i played some, one game against it chalice kind of shuts it down um of course you know they can brazen borrow it in a turn but sometimes you, you get your two mana counter spells so you know i mean i don't think i don't think chalice has been much better um Infinity is also on the rise again, and that's also why I like having access to Ratchet Bomb. To some extent, Chalice, maybe if I'm on the play on zero, sometimes can be okay too. But yeah, Ratchet Bomb against Affinity is going to be it's going to be nice. Always has been. Um, unfortunately, it doesn't necessarily deal with the uh, with the Mur Enforcers and those whatever they're called, those new four four basic land cycling or whatever land cycling um, you know Mur Enforcer type cards. Uh, so, you know, but of course, maybe I can supplement with some counter magic, because maybe if I ratchet bomb some of the early stuff away, they can't get affinity super quickly, and then maybe I can counterspell the, the Mur Enforcers to type larger stuff. I don't know. Um, I don't know. Affinity still might be almost as impossible as ever, but I gotta imagine ratchet bomb's gonna gonna help. It, it's, gonna, it's gonna put me in a better position than, than I've typically been, I think, because I've almost never played ratchet bomb in, in Merfolk. And of course, the reason I can play ratchet bomb is because... is because, um... Uh, Luris in, in many ways, I can actually recur it and I can actually rebuild my board even if I do sweep away an Aether Vial, you know, one time or sweep away some creatures, you know, some, you know, like I, it depends on the matchup, but, you know, for example, there's, like, I don't know if Infinity, Infinity doesn't play that much removal and also like Humans, there's another deck where this can come up with Ratchet Bomb and they don't play that much removal, so sometimes I can just recur Ratchet Bomb and even if it's killing some of my stuff, I still rebuild my board and they don't. So anyway, that, anyway, I don't know what else to say other than that. I, I love the sideboard, and probably I like the sideboard even more than I do the uh, traditional model blue sideboards. You know, it's just hard to really, hard to really justify playing Ratchet Bomb when it, it hits so much your stuff too in the non Luris builds. Um, I, I haven't tried it in the non Luris builds, but I have been thoroughly impressed in the Luris builds, and it really, and a lot of times it really does come up that I do rebuild. You know, like like for, like for example, I like, think about it. You crack Ratchet Bomb. The stuff doesn't disappear until the ability resolves, right? And I, I mean, I guess they can kill Luris in response to that, but like a lot of times, you'll at least be able to, for example, if you ratchet bomb for one, at, at least you'll be able to buy back your uh, your Aether Vial if you're playing it if you're playing it carefully. And I don't know what else to say other than just that a lot of the scenarios, a lot of the places I bring ratchet bomb in, they just don't seem to have a lot of removal in the first place. So, so it, I, it, the Luris's ability seems to compensate for it, and since Luris is a companion, and we see it consistently, like we, we basically see it every single game if we want to, um, yeah, that that alone kind of makes makes Ratchet Bomb. I don't know if Ratchet Bomb's unplayable in Mono Blue, but certainly, certainly with the Light Black Splash, uh, Ratchet Bomb is a heck of a lot more playable and, and really awesome. I think really really good. Solves a lot of problems with the deck. Um, you know, uh, let's just that just takes us back to I mean. You know, I mean, we we, we play we had to play the Soul Guide Lanterns uh, together with the Lurises to um to have a uh, recursion engine. Um, I'm playing Soul Guide Lantern because like if I don't play these in the sideboard, I have to play. I mean, in the main, I have to play them in the sideboard. You know, and like there's really just no room. I'd have to like either trim Ratchet Bombs or I suppose I could trim two Deprives and like trim two Ratchet Bombs, but I want all four Ratchet Bombs. Uh, plus, I'd like the idea of having two more counter spells. I really don't want to. Yeah, I just really don't want to have to trim cards in the sideboard. Uh, in order to fit more Soul Guide Lanterns in. Um, you know, Bobble is kind of better against non-Graveyard decks, but so many decks use the Graveyard anyway, incidentally or not. That Soul Guide Lantern, yeah, some again, some matchups is going to be a clunkier um, a clunkier Mistress Bobble, and you're going to wish that this was Mistress Bobble. But I think I think there's enough decks that use the Graveyard that um, that this is this is fine. This is just a fine kind of cycling card that also, also gives you some Grave Hate, you know, game one, and I think... Uh, yeah, I, I don't know what to say other than I like it. I like, I like, um, I've been liking Soul Guide Lantern. Um, it is, it is like a recursion engine with Loras, because you keep paying it for one, sacrificing draw a card, bringing it back, paying one. Um, which is a little, a little also less painful with Loras, because you can play Loras for three off of Aether Bile, uh, and then, and then you're not necessarily tapping out, uh, to play the, uh, Lantern, whereas the one of the nice things about, um, about, uh, Mistress Bobble is you can pay Loras for three and then bring back stuff, even if you don't have any mana, Available, but yeah. Um, I mean, Tide Shaper has been. Tide Shaper might honestly be one of the main reasons why uh, why I felt like um, Modern Horizons 2 has upgraded the deck. You know, and of course we're playing Spreading Seas 2. We're not. We so far I haven't really mana screwed very many people, but 
it has just been it has just been solid. Um, just just you know, it's just been as good as ever. Sometimes you can turn off utility land. Sometimes sometimes it enables island walk. Sometimes you don't see tide shaper. I don't know what else to say other than that. I've always I've always liked spreading seas and. And I'm happy to. I'm happy that it's got a friend that's a, of roughly equal, if not, if not, you know, most likely slightly more powerful, uh, slightly more power than itself. But I see no reason why I can't play both. Um, got the eight lords. That's pretty standard. Force of negation. You know, could I, I, I'm I'm fairly close to, to trying counterspell in the main instead, just so I have like a little more basis covered. But it's just in game one, it's harder to get a feeling for when you can tap out and when you can't. So. Uh, and also, when you don't have Aether Ball, some games get very clunky, and Force and Age kind of declunkifies your hand, um, enabling you to like multi-spell even when you, even when you uh, have to sp spend like two mana every turn. Um, I mean, dismember creature removal in the main deck, creature removal we can sink mana into and actually not lose life over. Sounds sounds pretty good to me, uh, to be honest. Um, yeah, you know, uh, repeal. You know, I know what else to say. Like, I, I, I. I this is a, a unique card, but I mean, you, we've seen me play it in a lot of different lists. It's just, it's a Swiss army life, you know, like you can get blockers out of the way, you can delay attackers, you can reset Aether Vial, you can, you can reset your own Aether Vial, but in the, you know, either in this deck or with this Velen deck, if it goes to three to play your three drops, you can reset it on two. And in this deck, once you, once you basically put Luris out, it's almost never going back up to three. I mean, you almost never need it at three anymore, so you can reset it and make it go back to two, kind of like giving your Aether Vial back. Um... You can gain card advantage by bouncing your spreading seas, replaying it. Um, sorry, it's a clunky card advantage engine, and it only puts you up one card. But it can also reset spreading seas. So, like against Tron, for example, if they've got like multiple towers, and this is on a tower, then you can like reset it back to your hand, and then play it on like a mine or something that they don't have two of, and turn off Tron. Um, you know, or just you know take it off a basic or something against Jun if it was on a basic or on, on whatever a regular duel, and then put it on like a, a raging ravine if it didn't have if it didn't have one on it before. Um, yeah, I just, just repeal has just been great. Uh, you know, and I guess that, I guess that leaves us with, um, um, I mean, yeah, I don't know what else to say other than that. I, I will address that there is a missing card here that I, I am missing and I cannot guarantee that I'm comfortable hundred percent with it not being here, but that's, uh, it's basically, um, it's basically, uh, um, Merfolk Trickster because Merfolk Trickster is, um, Merfolk Trickster is very good. It's been very good to us, but we got to make room uh, for the HC. We, we, I mean, like, I, I really want Spreading Seas in here just because it is a little more resilient uh, and harder to interact with. Um, you know, island, island Walk effect and and mana disruption and ability to turn off utility lands. Tide Shaper is just a little less reliable. It's a little faster. It's a little more aggressive. It's a little. Um, it also gives you something to Aether Vial off of one, it gives you more, it, it helps you curve out better, so like, it's, in the abstract, it's a little bit more powerful, but it's also a little less, it's a little more powerful overall, but it's, it's definitely less powerful as a seize effect, um, or at least less resilient, uh, easier to interact with, maybe is the best way to, to express it. Um, so at the end of the day, I mean, I had to cut something, I, 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 I actually gave some thought to maybe cutting, like, Lord of Atlantis, like, cutting a Lord. But that can't be right, especially now that I've got eight Cs. I got eight Lords. I got eight Cs. We got some good symmetry going on here. I don't know. I don't know what to say. Just uh, I had to cut something, and I don't know. Since we also have Ratchet Bomb, I think I think we may have a lot of the, you know bases covered. We like uh, we we like um, you know a uh, uh, Merfolk Trickster because it can deal with Skyclave Apper. I mean, uh, Squares of the Skyclaves. Which for some reason, I haven't really seen much anyway. I guess people are playing all kinds of other stuff. Um, yeah, it helps with the aggressive decks like like uh, pro like is it prowess and stuff. Uh, you can, you know, so this covers some of the bases for missing that. Of course, we could play both, but you know, um, oh, one of the main I forgot to mention. I gotta say this before I forget. One of the main things to like about uh, eight C's is there's so many freaking. Ur I mean, right now, so I don't know. This might even this might come up after Urza Saga's ban, and I don't know. Like, if it does, it does. Um, you know, but. Uh, I think it's worth noting that I think very few decks are probably set up to, to really hose Urza Saga as much as we are, because with eight of these Seas effect, Urza Saga just immediately dies. Um, and especially Tide Shaper, because you still leave a body behind. You know, Spreading Seas goes to the graveyard. But, like, yes, Tide Shaper for two mana just snipes that uh, that Urza Saga and leaves behind a body. That's, that's a pretty good effect. So, I really like that. Uh, and before it can even generate a token, yeah... Um, that that's one thing that that's one of my high hopes is that maybe 
but maybe before Urza Saga's ban and everybody starts getting on that bandwagon, maybe we can start really sniping it away. Uh, yeah, so anyway, other than that, I thought of maybe cutting Lord of Atlantis, but I just, you gotta be able to push damage. You got the 8C's effects. Um, spread, you know, Merfolk Trickster's uh, tap ability and losing all abilities ability, ability is not always necessarily gonna be gonna be as relevant, but um, yeah. Yeah, anyway, I don't know what to say other than uh, what else to say. Just, uh, just I've been, I've been liking the Luris Folk concept. I think, I think it's, uh, I think there's definitely something here and let's, let's give it a try and, uh, see how it goes. If you like this content, like, and subscribe, let's go. All right, match one. Let's see, uh, let's, let's see. Let's see how this uh, works out here. Da, 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 da. Here we are. I think we, I think we can and we will keep. Um, the clear water. This is one of the downsides. Is that sure we don't have to take damage from it, but at the same time, we may want it to be black to play Luris. Um, but I guess we'll see. I mean, as long as they're not playing Blood Moon um, or other non-basic hate. I mean, like for the most part, this is this is actually going to be basically strictly superior to uh, to an island. But the fact that it's non-basic definitely, though, is a downside that we have to respect. Anyway, all right. Let's see. <laughs> Pathway. This is also another non-island uh, blue source. So, so, so yeah. One of the advantages is that uh, we actually only have we only actually have four islands now. So on the plus side, choke does like basically nothing to us. Blood Moon has never been worse for us, but uh, choke at least. Yeah, you know. So we can play. We can play this and. Attack. And we may we may be able to clear play the clear water pathway for black. Hmm. Unless they can't block with it too. It is what it is. It's okay. I love solitude when I'm playing it. <clears throat> Would have preferred to be path to exile there, but then again they uh, went down a card. But a lot of times the decks that play it seem to have the ability to catch up on cards, so obviously they're you know a lot of times they're mitigating the downside. All right, and they just naturally have an island, so that's good. That's the nice thing about Tide Shaper. See, is like no matter what, at least it's a two-two, which is a respectable clock. Um, all right, so there's actually a chance I might play the pathway as a swamp. That's going to cause some mana issues later down the uh, the road, but I think it's better to be able to play the Luris than not at all. Okay, okay. Maybe we can actually uh, sneak the Luris in here. Yeah, let's uh, let's sneak the Luris in here while we can. I mean, we might get Supreme Verdict verdicted, but I don't know. Solitude, though, is uh, going to be uncounterable by us game one, so... That could come out at any time. Still, I mean, I just liked... I think landing Luris, even without any va value accruing from it, is going to be pretty good here. And that's another thing I like about Luris, is that... Oh, well, they shouldn't have... Well, I don't know. Um, I guess we need to go boom, boom, and boom. Seems like... Seems reasonable to try to... Okay. Okay, force negation, I guess. Alright, well, at least we get a land out of the deal. And we uh, deprive them of force negation. Uh, Aether Vile seems pretty sweet. Let's get this down. Especially since we had the Merc Water Path. But yeah, just sometimes you just need another creature. And Loris is just another creature that can help, you know, out of the board. And also, what's it called? Uh, 
Creeping Tar Pit is a sweet card, so I also get to unlock that. Okay, you're on. But at least it's not getting any value. Just like our Lurist didn't get any value. Kind of a slog fest type, uh, type match this might be. We actually almost can repeal that, but I don't know if we want to. Yeah, let's just, uh, let's just seize, seize them a little bit. We could even repeal our seize for card advantage. Maybe we do that while we're tapped, while they're tapped out. Could also, yeah, let's just do that while they're tapped out. It's not the craziest, most advantageous use of repeal, but it is, it is, make no mistake, like, a card advantage, so. Alright, well, I wonder if they got Restaurant Ace and Angel or something. <clears throat> they could also have Solitude, but at least Solitude would, uh, Okay. Um, I guess let's just start off by spreading seizing. Okay, what on earth is this? Okay, force negation, that's fine. Um, You know what, I, I miss out on attack with uh, Mutavolt, but I think that's worth it. Let's just tap this way. Well, why, why would it be worth it? Alright, well, let's just do this, I guess. Let's see if they path in response. Okay. Alright. Well, we didn't get a tar tar Shaper down, but we still had... We still did a lot that turn, and maybe getting Tide Shaper down would have been better. I don't know. We used our mana efficiently. Four, five, six, seven. So we can repeal, replay. Yeah. There's definitely stuff to like. And we drew Dismember, which is going to be good against this. So we can probably wait. Let's just always, always know. Yeah, always know. Yeah, see, now we get to bam, bam, bam. Looks like, yeah, playing Murkwater Pathway wasn't that big of a deal. So if they have Resto, we can, uh, oh, Cryptic Man or something. Okay, well, we could actually bounce the uh, Silver Gill in response in order to use the mana. It might not be the worst idea. And yeah, we'll do that before they draw a card. Yeah, let's do it. Okay, cool stuff. Can't play the Muta Vault we drew. Let's just play this out. If they can somehow counter the dismember, then uh, well, we got two of them, so let's let's just take the damage. I mean, they they seem to be fundamentally a control deck, so and they can't yeah, and they can't ephemerate, so hopefully they don't have like Wrath of God or something. If not, if not, we're really putting the pressure on. Kind of looks like Wrath of God. Well, alright, I mean, I guess I could have seen that coming, but I, I do usually like to just put the pressure on them. At least in game one. I'm not used to Rasp seeing this much play in uh, in game one, but... Anyway, so we got Creeping Tarpin in here, we've got... You know, they're, they're down their companion. You never know, we still might win this despite getting three for one. I mean, people have come back from getting worse than 3 for 1. 
I mean, we got multiple two-for-ones with those repeals and stuff. We are getting a little floody in addition to their path. So I think they only path once. Okay, they can remove my Aether Vial if they want. Got it. Hopefully draw a Lantern so we can at least force the action with a... With, um... Snapcaster Mage. Path to Exile right here is basically just hard removal because these lands are just not really that great. I mean, I could attack to both and be cute, but I mean, we do have one more turn next turn where we could attack and we can dismember a Snapcaster if they've got it after after combat, though, of course, because it's to ferry. Yeah, they just might not have that much going on. Yeah, do we just play out the land or do we bluff? Might as well bluff. I mean, like, what's the point, right? I'm going to steal an Aether Mile. Just draw two cards. It's probably better. Okay. Kind of pulling ahead. They're also drawing lands. We'll see. Alrighty, big to ferry. What the earth is this? Alright, well we can at least uh, just remember one of these. Without losing any life. It's pretty cool. If we draw a lord, I think that's just GG. Unless they have subtlety. <laughs> oh, well that's... That's not um, a win this turn. Or even necessarily next turn, even with an attack. But it is, uh, it is a path to victory. <laughs> That's a good card, I guess. Uh, like it's a land, but then it's also a win con later in the game. Yeah, that's a good card, but let's see how many spells they have. It's interesting, because they can draw an extra card, but they are somewhat limited in being able to abuse playing those extra cards. It's an interesting design, albeit a very powerful one. But if you think about it, is it really that much different than, um, than like, uh, what do you call it? Is it really that much different than Creeping Tar Pit? I mean, I'll say Creeping Tar Pit. Than the Phyrexian uh, Arena? Like, except, of course, it... You can draw two cards each turn, one for, um, always, no, yes, always, it said Hutterin is there, that, was, that must have been a, um, mistake, always, no, yes. Tide Shaper, you'll get caught up in the Tide Shaper. Alright, boom, boom, boom. And let's see if they Cryptic Command or just, uh, or Solitude or Path or any number of things. At least it's a plan, you know. It is a plan. It is, in fact, a plan. Alright. Well, I mean, let's try to play this with the kicker, because, I mean, why not? Counter spell, draw a card. Yeah, I guess I wanted to draw a card, so... 
Maybe, maybe you didn't want to give them the opportunity to draw a card. It is perhaps possible that I didn't want to um, to Aetherball up to two for that reason in part, but I'm more concerned about Silverhill Adept into another card, which is admittedly maybe a little bit. Well, okay. I must have a cryptic command. Okay, 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 okay. Alright. Um Here, let's do this. We can play around Cryptic Command at least by as such. We can do this, and then if they tap, we can animate both the Mutavolts. If they have Path though, then we can you know, play around it, but we shall see. I think probably have a removal spell or something. Or they just uh, Cryptic Command bounce. Okay. Well, at least we didn't fully play into that. At least they had to discard their own card. Um, let's get rid of Cryptic Command. I think that's the best card they can flash back. Flashing back anything would be kind of kind of bad for us, though. Maybe against my better advice, I'm going to do this. Yeah, that's like a completely dead card at this point. So I do all our all our basic uh, islands. So the path is again one kind of thing. So we just have as yeah. So as for non-utility lands, we just have one more dark slick and three more pathways. And here is call. Well, if we had, I would feel better about this if we had a. If we uh, weren't shut off from playing instance by Teferi. Return moderation in their hand. That's weird. Why did they return moderation? It seems a little bit like a desperate play. We can only hope, right? Mm hmm. Oh, this might actually be good. This me if we draw a um a lord, you know. Well, well, well. Looky here. Mm -hmm. Okay, but they still probably have a solitude. At least we have hope. Will our hope? be dashed. We can only imagine. Probably it will be dashed, but maybe you never know. 51 cards. They actually are still have a lot of cards left in their libraries. Because of 80 cards, they're not guaranteed to have Solitude, but oh yes! We were worried about Solitude. Oof, but thank goodness. Thank goodness we will take it. That was actually the perfect sequence of events. I mean, not going to lie, that was pretty lucky. Just shut off their Probably path they were holding up. Go to, go to beginning of combat, draw a lord so we can pile it in. Oh, goodness. That was... Just when you think that you really don't have any outs, boom. You know? I mean, when they're that dull on life, why not? Um, okay, so this then begs the question. I didn't see any Snapcaster Mages, so do we want to... Do we want to... Play them? That's the question. Do we want to play Snapcaster? That is the question. I don't know. I don't know. I mean, do we want to try to hate on a card that they may or may not have? And it, it did actually turn out drawing that card was actually critical. If we didn't draw that card um, by cracking it, there was just no way. Um, but we also kind of need an engine with Loris. Okay, we know one thing for sure. We need Counterspell and we need Deprive. We know that for sure. Um, I mean, outside of that specific scenario, I don't know that Spreading Seas is uh, all that good. In this deck, to be honest, Dismember definitely seems more suspect. Yeah, so at the end of the day, I mean, Ratchet Bomb could be good, but I think it's just so iffy. I mean, if they're playing Amer Amerias, I think we're already... We want to try to play cards rather that prevent us getting to that point. Plus, re good old Repeal is not really bad. Ameria hate. Um, I mean, you know, two Spreading Seas aren't bad, but they're also like... Yeah, the problem with Chalice is now Chalice turns off our stuff too, and... 
and you know soul guide is also an engine and the other options don't seem that great so we will definitely uh, we will definitely I think I think this is a definitely a good good uh, good sideboard cards to have in this matchup mostly just bringing in more counter magic that's where you want to be in these matchups Well, I mean, we get to curve a turn one Merfolk into a turn two Merfolk, maybe into a Lord, maybe not. Can't complain. Uh, it will be taking less damage than if this was a Watery Grave, but also casting Loris is going to be more difficult. Um, against control decks, it doesn't matter, and it may even help prevent them gaining life if we lose life, because it might it might uh, make their um their uh, timely reinforcements harder to gain life off of. So this is your white control. Yay, we get to mark it as 1-0. Yeah, we'll keep. But see, don't give up just because you got Supreme Verdict. Good. You might be like, oh, so lucky. But then they're like, oh, even more lucky. Yeah, yeah and I just think they, they were kind of lucky to see that with 80 cards in their deck. I mean, like, they have to be playing, like, four... And they even with four, I think they see they have about the same chance of seeing it if they play like three in a, a sixty card deck. Realistically, they're probably only playing like three or two. And I think, in my humble opinion, I think that that's really unreliable. Okie dokie. Okie dokes. Oh. All right. Hey, well, that's good that they have to respect a one drop like that. Well, it could have another one, but I have to take this opportunity to try to uh, try to uh, get this under counter magic when I can. I'm fine with them removing it, countering it, not as much. So, all right. Yeah, please path this, okay? Because <laughs> two mana, uh, draw a card, search your library for a uh, basic land card and put it in a play tapped actually is a pretty good card. So their path, even like, this card is pretty good by itself, but honestly, path arguably might convert it into a card that's even better, or about the same. Which is better, a land or a 2-1, you know? So, okay, here's the deal. Do we, uh, do we play into Archimedes Charm? Presumably they don't counterspell, otherwise they would have uh, lost three life off of this. Um, presumably they don't have another Mystic Disputer, where they would have Mystic Disputed the Silver Mill Adept, unless of course they just drew it, but this is assuming, you know, based on what the information we had last turn. Um, so that means, that leaves Archmage's Charm, and honestly, I'm fine to run this into Archmage's Charm. Now we're a little bit more worried about Supreme Verdict. I'm more worried though about them just Archmage's Charming and just pulling ahead. So I am going to... Play this because even if they aren't just charm, at least they don't draw two cards. And if they supreme verdict, supreme verdict will be a one for one basically because the silver gill adept was a free roll anyway. But with 80 cards, it's, it's not like a, a sure thing at all that they're gonna have supreme verdict in their hand. I just want to be aggressive, okay. All right, all right. I mean, but you know what? Like I said, that's a that's a one for one. As long as you got Silvergill in the equation, it's ultimately a one for one. This member does help deal with uh, Urian. I mean, if they want to trade with a Snapcaster, that's fine by me. I just like putting Loris to hand and just have to just threaten to do more stuff if they tap out to do whatever it is they want to do. On the other hand, I can't repeal my my master, which for what it's worth, you know that that's not nothing. But 
Uh, I want to try to counter this. Um, I don't know if it's going to work, but it's a pretty powerful card. Women's Veto. Alright. We'll see, but now this is good because now we can uh, capitalize with Luris, which maybe they'll. Drawing a Merfolk would have been best, but. Alright, so we have to play this as the Merkwater. Bam, bam. Bam, I guess. Would have been sweeter. Oh, I guess I could have played Tide Shaper and attack. That might have been better. Well, whatever. I guess no, I guess this way we sneak in one more damage. Although this way we would have snuck in even more. But the fact that we did get one extra damage means it's still not that bad. Hopefully not another Supreme Verdict. Man, like in an 80 card deck, I guess they play all four of these. Dovins, it is worth noting that they have to cast a spell in order to in order to actually break even with the card. And all right, let's uh, boom, 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 boom. Let's just do it this way. All right. Let's try to get in damage. If counter spells are what they have, maybe we're getting under them, like cryptics and stuff. Uh, not field rune. That's a good one. I wonder when they're gonna try to play uh, Urion. And only one island left. Sad. <laughs> well, let's attack and see what happens. Bam. <laughs> see, are they going to try to remove it? At least we can appeal it. Oh, that's fine. I think we're going to repeal the uh, Urion in end turn. Or we could repeal our own Silvergill. I think they want to remove it, and <laughs> just for sits and giggles. Um, yeah, you know, I'm, gonna, I'm going to freaking repeal this. I don't care what y'all say, but if I draw a double lord, counterspell's not bad either. And I just win. That is a good two cards to draw. And now I'm completely untapped. So actually my position ain't that bad. I mean, they got a ton of cards though, I gotta say. Um, question is, do I care about Yurion? And I think the answer, no, because I mean a Lord would completely invalidate that. There's a decent amount of cards in my deck that kind of invalidate the, the Yurion. And they need more than just that. So maybe, and plus they have to tap a lot of mana. So maybe if they play Urion, I just let it resolve. Okay. Well, yeah, they're gonna need more than that. So I guess I counter the Urion now. If that's what they're on. The worst would be like double path, but like. Well, actually, even double path. Double path plus, like, force negation. No, they just give up. All right, sweet. Well, we'll take it. All right, one up for Luris, folk. All right, match two. Back to Luris, Merfolk. This time with eight Cs. This time with, a uh, with one land, so I think we're going to have mulligan. All right, this time with two lands, so I think we can, I think we can keep... Um, I'm just not sure how good Force of Negation or how necessary Force of Negation is going to be. So this could be a mistake, but I 
So Troll Guard Lantern randomly could be excellent if it's Dredge or something, or the or the Troll King food deck or something. And on top of that, um, I don't necessarily want to pitch any of these Merfolk, at least not right now. And on top of that, I may need a, I may need an engine with Luris. I prowess, but this is where a Ratchet Bomb. Well, hopefully. Now I still think this matchup is a bad matchup, even even when I um, even when I do have access to Ratchet Bomb, but it's almost unwinnable even with Svalun. Uh, even though Svalun has a big body, it's just uh, it's just with prowess to kill all your creatures, and I think the Ratchet Bombs are gonna honestly do more than the Svaloons. I think so. There, that is you know something to consider. Um, um, uh, I think this one's just kind of a lost cause because like we're not they're not out racing what they're doing. And we have a little interaction at least. Okay, that's good. Very mad at Malfros. Always a part of the most impressive starts. This is probably just kind of a lost cause here. Well, either they... Here's the situation. I feel like either they... Um, put the wrong mana by accident in their mana pool, or they've got, like, double mutagenic growth. Um, I mean, very clearly, I have to try to do this, but I have a feeling they're going to save up mutagenic growth. But, obviously, okay. Um, I have a feeling if I play Silver Girl, well, Lava Dark kills me either way. Those Lava Dark flashback, they got 6 damage, so... Since I have to block, I think either way, might as well block with Silver Guild and with the with the Lord. <clears throat> I don't know. Like we have to hope their only removal spell is. Uh, it's just not gonna. It's just not gonna end well. Well, I mean, like, that doesn't kill me immediately, at least. <clears throat> I don't know, man. If we take, we just... We're so low. And we die to the storm. We die to the storm. Let, let's make no mistake. We die to the storm wing next turn anyway. So, it doesn't matter if we don't block. We're, we're out of dismember range anyway. I mean, we can't play dismember either way, so... Play this... And at least feel good about ourselves by attacking for six. Yep, take that. All right. Wow, they managed to draw seven cards or something before we even got to um, click anything. Well, we got Ratchet Bomb and we got Chalice. See if we want to bring in anything else. I think Tide, this is not the rash for Tide Shaper. And Soul Guide Lantern can put to Chalice. Hopefully, recurring Ratchet Bombs are our source of value. Spreading Seas is also not at its best in this matchup, so let's, let's get the counter magic in here. Let's get the magic going. And I guess we'll take out two Lords for two Deprive. I think Deprive can be good. Um, obviously, it's just more counter spell. Yeah, because that's the thing. We just basically have to have to play a control deck here. No two ways about it. And I think this is about as good as we can probably do in this matchup, you know? I don't know what to say other than that, yeah. Nothing's perfect, but... I mean, hey. Totally play... 
totally turn into a control deck, but this has neither Chalice or nor Ratchet Bomb, and I don't think Counterspell alone is gonna is gonna do it. This I don't know. I don't feel like Mulliganing again. This is a little disheartening though, because but I guess I guess this hand is does have a is a little more gas, as they say. Maybe I can counter a uh, Metamorphose and slow them down by pitching more. Then maybe we draw Chalice later. I don't know. To be honest, I don't know. I mean, they don't always have turn one prowess creature. I mean, we play this deck, and like a lot of times we don't, even though you think with eight you're guaranteed, or really not. But it seems like they always have it when we're up against them, but you know. Yeah, 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 yeah. We need our sideboard cards. I guess I could have continued to mull, but I don't know. This, this, hand, this hand does stuff. I mean, this art is a little bit kind of promotionally, but I do, uh, I do think it's actually fairly, I mean, for like a promotional-ish type art, it's actually not bad. I mean, by promotional, I mean like commercial, it feels commercial-ish, commercial, commercial -ish. but, uh, alright, well, I'm definitely going to try to trade with the Swiss Pier. I mean, if they've got mutagenic growth, and they got mutagenic growth, like, I, I'm going to have to fish that out of their hand at some point. Well, that, that, I'm not going to lie, that's a little weird. I don't, I don't know why they trade that. Um, alright, well, I, this could have been a mistake playing it as a blue, but, you know, let's see, hmm, you know what, it's okay, I know I said I might be able to counter it, but I'm going to save, I think, my counter spells for, uh, for, uh, for expressive iteration. Uh, I think I need to counterspell that. Yeah. Counterspell. I don't know why they didn't attack. I don't have the answers. Um. This was hold up force negation. We really want to like counter like expressive iteration because it it just they just end up with so much more of whatever they need. I would, I would like to counter that, but unfortunately, I think I'll just have to repeal it. Hopefully, I draw into a counter spell. Oh, that's that's not nothing. <coughs> hmm. I don't know. A part of me just wants to jam lords. I don't know if this is going to be good or not, but at least maybe, you know, I might take some damage in the air, but at least maybe I can slow down some of their ground effect creatures. Or maybe not. could counter this, but in a way, why? I could just play... Yeah, I don't really plan to block anyway, or double block. And actually, yeah, I guess I do. Yeah, let's, uh, let's counter this. We'll double block, if they give us the chance. We're hoping Luris can uh, pull us back from the brink. In modern. <clears throat> Alrighty. Let's see. So we can pay two, deal with this, put Loris to hand, maybe keep this back as a blocker. I don't I don't think we want to keep it back as a blocker. Have to do this now. Have to return last hand. Now the critical question to attack. I'm worried I'll just die. To be honest, I, I don't know. I really don't know about this. I really. 
Really, we didn't draw any any of like our at least our heart impact sideboard cards. Oh man, and more of these are just really tough for us to deal with. And okay, well, maybe if we would have a tile, I don't know. Maybe we, we might have just been dead because at least we forced them to. No, I guess we we would have been at one. We would have been at three if they didn't ignore that. That's a little late, man. That's a little late. I'm I'm a little bit pissed. Um. I don't know, I mean, I could play this on one, uh, but then the, uh, I don't know, I don't know, then I'm just going to die, but the problem is I'm just going to die anyway, because they're just going to kill Dolores. Yeah, I gotta do this, I gotta... And I may just have to chump block with Dolores, which sucks, but like... Man, oh, yeah, 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 yeah. I do think this stack had a better shot. I just, I don't know. I, should, I guess I should have continued mulliganing. It's just weird. I don't know if I do get to live another turn. I still need a dismember, so I don't know. Oh, I mean, that's. I guess that's off to a good start. Okay, I guess that's off to a good start. Well, maybe, maybe they can't attack with the swift spear, and maybe we gain life. Holy moly, are you for real? Um, but, you know, I mean, still, I, I need, I need something. I, well, repeal gets rid of this, but the problem is this is what's going to kill me. Let's, uh, let's get Master back. We need to gain some life. I mean, eventually we're going to rebuild our Merfolk army. And we are gaining life every time we can attack. So, I don't know, maybe we came back, and definitely Luris' lifelink is huge here. Actually, this is not bad for us, because we can, um, because this means they might not be able to replay their Sprite Dragon. Yeah, thank goodness we, uh, thank goodness we have a heal. See, did we play Mutavolt last turn? I can't remember. Castmaster, Pearl Trident. Yeah, I just Castmaster, Pearl Trident, and then I attacked, and then their turn, so. So this is not going to kill me here. Oh, what am I thinking? Oh, man, I'm sorry, folks, but, like, Oh man, I uh, they might be able to just play another spell and kill me. Whereas I had I had repeal in my hand. Um, so I, I had a pathway back. I don't know what happened. I I just uh kind of blanked out here. Oh man, I know this is like a really bad viewing experience. Cause we we have the uh, we have the answer here, and like we even oh my goodness, I, I totally just uh, just killed myself here. I could have just I should have just blocked with this. At least we'll show them we have it. I don't think this is the most perceptive opponent though, so I bet I bet he doesn't realize that I could have uh, I could have saved myself. Um, so anyway, it doesn't matter. All right, match uh, three. Let's let's try not to make such an egregious misplay. I was so obsessed with whether or not whether or not my uh, mutable had summoning sickness that somehow I for anyway. This just uh. Let's just focus on the game at hand, and this is a pretty good hand as far as Laris Folk goes, I think. Oh, human, it's just a very, a nice, a nice detour from some of the nonsense that Modern can throw at you these days. Um, and see, this one thing I like about 8 Cs is that I can uh, play Spreading Cs, and then Tide Shaper is pretty good as a, just a one drop. I will. Don't mind if I do. 
Okay. <clears throat> now it gets the uh, it gets the pump without having to pay the kicker. All right, well we got dismember for that, thankfully. I think Loris is going to help in this matchup too. I think we'll bounce this because it's just a very good bounce target. Okay, and I think we'll play, we'll play this, and I guess we'll dismember. So no, actually we'll attack if they want to offer. I mean, if we, um, if they block, we'll just play the Lord. Okay, not to. I mean, like you know, they. Th I don't know. They, they, they think I'm full of shit, I guess. Um, I mean, they might be like, yeah, that was a trade in my finger. I don't know about that. <laughs> they really thought I'd just chump attack into them, I guess. I, I didn't I didn't think that was going to work, but I'll take it. Uh, okay, that's also not really all that bad, and I don't even think I need to use Dismember on it, to be honest. But plus, when I trade this, that also gives me something to buy back with Luris, too. Something to consider. I could buy it, buy it back even right now. In fact, maybe I will. Yeah, actually, why not? Hope I'm not being greedy here, but let's uh, let's put Loris to hand. Let's play the pathway. Play Loris. Get Tide Shaper back. Pretty. Uh, I think it's not bad. Now I can also infinite block and keep keep buying back. Reflector Mage on Loris does absolute nothing. Oh, well, I do have Dismember for that, thankfully. So I think I might as well block, to be honest, because I don't have anything to buy back next turn. And, you know, 4 damage is not to be trifled with, so I'll block. Pretty good. Do I have any other way to target this? I don't know. Um, well, I guess now I've got an engine going. Uh, but anyway, so let's, let's bring this back. Let's, uh... Yeah, I think let's just, um... Kill this and then play Silvergill. Yeah, I think that's what we're gonna do. We can gain the life. Yeah, we gain most of that dismember back. Alrighty. Another Phantasmal image does allow them to start buying their uh, creatures back, though. Alright. And I think, look, I think, like, yeah, in these matchups without a lot of removal, Luris just kind of, just kind of wins the game on the spot. <laughs> Bouncing my Luris will do literally nothing. Because if, if they think about it logically, I don't, I can't have any, um, I can't have any three drops, three, three, you know, three mana creature, creatures in my deck, because they would conflict with Luris. So, so, that was not really a good, uh, a good bounce. You know. Alright. So, you know, kinda it is what it is. Uh unfortunately they're kinda stonewall on my Luris, but but we can do this. Um Yes, yeah, get rid of their Mantis Rider. So I can't buy it back. And we'll sacrifice it. Get this back. Get rid of the other one. So, so their own Loris is a lot less uh, impressive. And then I guess we could Tide Shape, but then I guess we just play Master and attack. Yeah, it seems reasonable. Hopefully, they're not main deck dismember. They don't have any cards in hand, so. Not bad. 
Yeah, this is definitely a matchup where Luris really shines. But honestly, Luris was close to being able to bring us back single-handedly from from is it prowess and literally well, was largely because of the life game, but also like the bringing stuff back. I don't know, man. Like maybe maybe I love uh, Sivlion, but Luris is such a good card. Luris is such a good card. I I don't know. Valley's Lieutenant, that's a good card too. I could honestly just chump with my lord. If they attack with both though, I can I can attack again. Um I could just take six. But I don't wanna I don't like losing. I would hate to lose for a dumb reason. So well I'll just chump. So we'll bring this back for sure. And maybe we'll bring this one back too. And we'll just play it, I guess. <clears throat> and we'll attack with Loris and we'll see what they block. If they If they triple block, it could be a problem, but if they just double block, then we have this member. All right, we have this member, and I think, I think we will. Boom, boom. Gain the life back. Boom, boom. Uh, yeah, and I'm, I'm liking that we, uh, we save the other three life. I don't think this, the only way they win is if somehow they both are able to multiple, they're able to boost their army multiple times. Like like uh, twice with two Latinius Thalia's lieutenants and somehow getting them all flying or something. So, all right, Luris single-handedly winning that game can't can't complain about that. I honestly don't know why Luris uh, wasn't isn't seeing more play wasn't seeing more play in Murfolk before before Civilon. So I don't know, man. No Ratchet Bomb, man. Like this is this is where this is where I really see an advantage over the Civilon build. Um, yeah, because Loris is powerful, make no mistake. And this, the rest is just, uh, not. I mean, the Soul Guide Lanterns are kind of clunky, as are the Seas, but not as clunky as uh, Dead Counter Magic, so... All right, let's see. Alrighty. Well, we've got our own Aether Vial. We've got Interaction. Ratchet Bomb is kind of like the trump card in this matchup, but with four of them, there's a possibility we might draw into it, so we shall see. Hopefully we draw Repeal, maybe, to also to disrupt this, but Ratchet Bomb would honestly be even better. It's, it's also nice that their only basic they happen to see is an island. Hmm. Yeah, I mean, Aether Vial on the first... I mean, a repeal on the first Aether Vial would be pretty sweet. If that's something that the fates allow. I. Well, let's just get the uh, Creeping Tar Pit down while we can. I mean, we're going to be able to play the, the Lord next turn off the Vial anyway. Okay, great. No one drops. That means a little more clunk. For the opponent in modern. Alright. Oh man, so they got a lot of probably three drops and stuff. Two and three drops, I'm guessing. Just certainly doesn't look like a lot of one drops. play this out. We don't want to play the uh, Spreading Seas yet when they uh, don't have any, any like we, when it doesn't disrupt them at all and they already have an island. Okay, okay. Um, 
Yeah, I guess we'll zap the, uh, the lieutenant. Because, uh, the champion is a little bit, a little bit easier to hit with a repeal, but honestly, we're probably going to just end up, uh, Actually, let's just zap this now before something goes horribly, horribly wrong. Honestly, we shouldn't have waited anyway. Because now they want to play Thali's Lieutenant or... So, okay. Double the pleasure, double the fun, double the gun. Mm -hmm. Yeah, of course. Alright, well, we've got two of these things to use in modern, so we can... I don't want to say always no, but I do want to say no this turn. Hmm. Hmm. I mean, I, this, this will just flat out kill the copy Thalia. Which, honestly, that's, uh... That's kind of our bigger worry, anyway. Let's just play the other Lord. And let's, uh... And let's kill that Thalia. We won't draw a card, but um, I think it's worth it to get that thing off the table. Merfolk Trickster is nice in this situation, but we don't have access to Merfolk Trickster, of course. Sad times. Meddling Mage? Oh. Alright, well I guess they're takeoff spreading seas. I definitely have to remove this while I can. Yep. I don't get a human trigger from this. Whew. That's rough though. Especially since I already used two dismembers. <clears throat> they're out of they're out of gas though, and we can rebuild. We do have Luris. And we're gonna we're gonna have to lean very heavily on it. Alright. And we get to play Tide Shaper at least. It would be kinda nice to try to shape their uh, their cavern, but with all these Aether Vials, I don't think disrupting their mana. I don't think that's going to disrupt their mana at all. I don't think they should have attacked with both, but hey, what do I know? Um, yeah, I'm just going to chump block because I guess I, I can infinitely recur it with Luris. Hope they didn't draw. Um, I hope they didn't draw like a, a deputy. If they drew a um, perfector mage, it should be fine. It's really just deputy or like main de or like dismember that's gonna really like, put me out of the game. Okay. Uh, I guess they're gonna play meddling mage. Okay, that doesn't stop me from doing much. Uh, I guess I can pay this with the kicker. I guess I can play this one with the kicker. I mean, because it just so happens I can't, you know, nothing else will really do much, so. Alright, I mean, I'd love to attack. They honestly should have tried to ambush my Luris, um, in my opinion. I, I, I might have attacked because, 
Yeah, I'm, I very well might have attacked. I was kind of leaning towards attacking, but I hadn't like thought it fully through. Yeah, I, I, I don't really see much upside to them just doing that on my upkeep. Okay, so we got some options here. Um, I'll take a lot of damage from this, but I will also I could also kill Nathalia. I think I think I need to. Oh, I, could, I would go down to four. I don't know. I, I need to actually win, so I think I have to actually have to try to grind down their um to grind down their cards somewhat. Well, this time, this time, if they're being a little sneakier, let's use top one. Yeah, top one. All right. If they got me, they got me. Um, I need to gain the life because there's just no. Hopefully, it's not another Thalia. Okay. All right, yeah, I'll take the life, and I can chop block a little more freely now. Yeah, you see, I, I, there's a very good chance I would have I would have attacked last turn, and they would have eaten my Luris, and that, that would have been feels bad. So they misplayed for sure. I mean, like, yeah. So got to factor that in. Hmm. Hmm. I'm tempted to block this, but then I just die. So. I'll just do it like this, and probably there's another Thalia, but I think I think since these keep coming back, I can afford to be a little bit a little bit aggressive with my blocks. I would ideally, I mean, I could play this and try to get it back, but no, let's just uh, just cast it. Should I attack with Loris? I think now I'm in the territory of not wanting to attack. I could attack with this too, but then Yeah, I don't I don't think I can. Yeah. Maybe I'm being too cautious, but Let's see if I can bluff them with a 3-drop that they, if they think it through, no, I can't have. Um, that being said, all I'm losing out on is not F6-ing. Well, they didn't attack. That's, uh, that's interesting. Alrighty, so... Another, another, uh, Aetheral will be nice, so that I... Yeah. Alright. Not bad, not bad. Alright, not bad. This is a recursion engine. What do we not want them getting back with Kudro or with our, our uh, Lures? Probably Thalia's lieutenant for sure. Um, yeah, I see no point to attacking. And now if they block the silver gill I get a I get an infinite recurring card draw engine as well. I see no reason why though they shouldn't at least be attacking with the the freebooter. Alright, so now they get they get a free freeboot. Given the boot. Alrighty. Give them the boot. And but I think I win next turn unless they have creature interaction, which they might in modern. Okay, I don't know that I want to reveal that this just yet. So I have to play Master. Maybe I attack with Loris too, just um, just because this is probably my last turn. Uh, and 
I guess I could block with Luris too. I mean, well, I don't know. Let's just see. Let's see if they got something. Oh, I should have attacked and I should have, you know, whatever. Let's hold Luris back as a, as a possible blocker. Okay, alright, we'll take it. Oof, that one was much closer. But, yeah, hey, Loris, Loris definitely keep that. Loris was the only reason. Okay. Alright, match four. Let's, uh. Match four, let's uh I guess we can keep this. Um I mean we got double aether vial, so I mean even though we got kind of a clunky starting hand. Let's see how this goes. Alright, well, let's see. Are they going to censor me? Alright, cool stuff. Let's do this. That's way we can both uh, put Luris into play and have our two drops. You know, have our cake and eat it too, as they say. Yep, 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 yep. <clears throat> okay, Teferi. Alright, well this isn't really going to slow us down that much in the grand scheme of things. Okay, they don't even bounce it. Alrighty. Uh, I think we need to at least... Mountain, plains. Yeah, let's at least try to. Not bad, not bad. I could try to tide shape, but they've got an island in here anyway. I think this is some kind of Sahili deck. In which case, we're definitely to get to ferry out of here. Okey-dokey. Or maybe this is Niv. I don't understand why Niv needs Yurion. Like, I don't think they need more card advantage. I would have thought they need more, uh, consistency. But, I don't know. They seem to love playing Yurion for some reason. I guess their logic is that... It helps out when uh, when they don't see things, I guess. I don't know. Um, but we can completely just take care of Sahili right now. We can also severely uh, severely neuter to ferry. Let's do that. Let's severely neuter to ferry, and then let's. Uh, Let's take care of Sahili. I mean, uh, Nahiri. Alright, let's see. This way, if Teferi ticks down, at least I'll have to sacrifice it. Right. 
No, and then yes. Hopefully, hopefully it's not stuck on auto. Yes, okay. <clears throat> Alrighty, uh, blah, 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 blah. Uh, what's the game plan here? I kind of want to put Luris back to hand, uh, and then play... I don't think they have, um, Snapcaster Mage. So I guess I'm going to attack... I'm going to attack all to Teferi. Uh... Yeah, we just need to get this off the board. I'm playing a fully kicked uh, Kaya's guy, I guess. Well, a good thing we didn't go more all in, and that could have been a uh, Niv. So like, it's not that bad. In fact, in fact, we can bring back Lord of Atlantis with Loris. So I think we will uh, do that. Or a Tide Shaper maybe, so that uh. So this is already an island. Can we cut them off a of color? Green, green. So they have green. Uh, they have double black. They have. They don't have double blue, although we're gonna give them another blue. Red. Yeah, we can cut them off a of red. Wait, wait. Yeah, we can cut them off a of red. Swamp, forest. Yeah, let's cut them off for red. I wonder why it says tap at green. Blue, I would have thought that would be overwritten. I think it is overwritten. But I wonder why it says forest and island mountain. Why, why would it still be a mountain? I don't think they can nib for five. Kaya's Guile's not going to be as good. Sky, let's see. I don't know what they got. I don't know what they have. I just don't know. Could be any number of things. Alright, well, there's their mountain, I guess. Going full bring to light or Niv, I guess. Niv, as it were. Okay, so they, they restocked a lot. I mean, but it's not. And I'm not sure what they put in their hand. They put Ren and Six. Okay, they put Lightning Helix, so that means no Nahiri.
Yeah, Kaya's Guile to Fairy. I guess that's what they got. Uh, well, I mean, in the grand scheme of things, I don't think that's, like, that bad. I mean, there's nothing else this file can do anyway. Man, I really want to get that to Fairy. But I also really want to play this Silvergill Adapt. I gotta get the Silvergill Adapt, I think, while I can. Ah, that's not, that land's not gonna do it. Well, what I could do is I could preemptively dismember and then attack, but then I take a lot of damage. But I mean, maybe that's not such a big deal. I guess I'll do it. I mean, I don't like it, but, you know, I'll put them to the test. I have to do this, unfortunately, at sorcery speed because of freaking Teferi. Alright, so Luris is going to go bye bye, no doubt about that. Another bring the light. Omnath. I need. Niv is just such <clears throat> such an annoying, obnoxious card advantage engine, but once we have four counter spells and two deprives against their 80 card deck, maybe that'll even it up. Actually, why did they go so all in on killing Teferi? They've just got another one anyway. Well, I guess we prevented... Nah, I don't know. Actually, in retrospect, I don't know. I don't know why I did that. Helix. No, I'm caught up in there. <coughs> Lightning Helix. Lightning Helix. Lightning Helix. Teferi on. Yeah, that's fine. Well, 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 what do we have here? Uh, I mean, at the end of the day, I think I have to try to spread and seize this. Could play the Soul Guide Lantern, but who really cares, right? Uh, well, at least I can tap it from yeah. Bam, bam. And I guess I'll play the other one. OK, 
Okay. Well, we're gonna we're gonna do this, I guess. Um, I don't know if this is correct or not, but but it would be kind of nice to clear the Teferi. Well, I guess we can't clear it because it's one of the summing signals. Okay, bam, 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 bam. Bam, bam. This is the biggest issue for me with Merfolk, because some of the games just grind on. I love the way with Infect, usually one way or the other, the games are over pretty quick, so it's just like... You can do a league in like one hour with Infect, you can't do that with like any other deck. Even even Mono Red isn't, uh, doesn't give me that those kind of quick games. <clears throat> even Hammer Time didn't. Both because it kind of grinded a little better, but not grinded enough that I could consistently win, that I, that I, you know... Ren and six. Okay. They still got the uh, Urion that they can put their hand. I don't understand why they need more grind with Urion. Maybe somebody can help me understand. Like why? Why do they need Urion? It seems like overkill, and it would seem like consistency in their deck is the bigger issue. Yeah, I guess for sure. This one. <laughs> well, well, well. If it isn't our good pal Ren and Six waiting to get tar pitted. Tar and feathers for you, my good sir. Tar and feathers. Sacrifice this, thank you very much. It has unblockable. And this isn't only Merfolk that plays this card, so I'm a little surprised I didn't, I didn't know that, but you know, hey, what can we do? Blah! Yeah, it drew a lot of lands that game somehow. Definitely playing Counterspell, definitely playing Deprive. We're definitely playing. We're definitely playing, um. I don't know if we need Spreading Seas, although, like, they, they do have, um, Utopia Sprawl somewhere in their deck, which I just didn't see that game. Uh. Honestly, I don't think this game is as much about the Lords. I could be totally off base about this, but I'm actually thinking to cut the Lords. So you see Silvergill, Lords, that's 10, 10 creatures. Believe it or not, in my experience, this has this has worked. Um, yeah, Repeal is good for card advantage, so like, yeah, we'll, uh, we'll just uh, run it like this. And so the Atlanta is just good for Luris Recursion. This is just a way for us to pull ahead. And it ain't half bad just as like, just, just to draw through our deck anyway. Yeah, we'll keep. 
Uh, Tide Shaper. No, we don't need to play Tide Shaper just yet. If they Utopia Sprawl, Tide Shaper is going to be a happy camper. I got a feeling there's a Utopia Sprawl coming on. Yay, Tide Shaper is a happy camper. Even if they kill it, it still did its uh, did its job by turning this into an island. Kicka, you'll get caught up in the kicka. Kicka. All right. Bam. That's nice. That was nice. Glad I waited. The wait was worth it. Don't like marking zero one, but let's uh, let's fix that, okay? Okay, I'm gonna attack. I'm gonna actually put Luris to hand because um, yeah, I'm gonna put Luris to hand because like, I, I don't think they can really play anything that like punishes me too badly just yet. They could play to parry, but I, I can pressure it at least. I don't think I can play Luris just yet. Um, I want to at least guarantee myself some value, but the Soul Guide Lantern down the road does do that. Teferi. Teferi would be yeah, annoying. I could just I'll attack it down to one. Uh, if they assuming they even tick up, if they tick down, I'll just attack it and maybe get it off the board. <sighs> For some reason, they're running their clock. Helix. They may want to say if they if they're kind of light on removal, they may want to save that for for Luris. Okay, okay, okay. Okay, bud. Yeah, let's just uh let's just attack this off the face of the earth. And I don't think I need to hold up counterspell just yet. Famous last words. I think I have to play this as black, even though it's going to make mana awkward for everything else, but I just, I have to be able to cast Luris when, when the time comes, when the people are ready. Hopefully I draw another land so I can play Luris, crack the uh, lantern, and get the lantern back. For some guaranteed value. In modern. Ooh, please be another Utopia Sprawl. That's, that's going to be nice for me. Can't hold up Counterspell though because I had to put this play this as Murkwater, but I think it's okay. Right. Yeah, and actually this could create problems because I really do want to kill that, but I do have um, the need now to counter their nonsense. So I think I will have to, uh, we're good playing that as Merc Water. See, this is an advantage where Watery Grave comes in, comes in handy. Um, yeah, if they want to kill the Muta Vault, whatever, be my guess. On the other hand, I mean, on the one hand, like, it lowers my mana count, but on the other hand, it also 
it also prevents me from going to keep paying one mana to gain access to a creature. These ones are just free. They don't have white. Oh, I got white here. Oh no! I hope they don't have some type of some type of what's it called? Uh, um. Okay, thank goodness. I gotta gotta at least do something to prevent that. All right, let's just attack. Can't play Lurus just yet. I'll play Aether Vial. What's actually one day maybe I might just hard cast Lurus. As long as I can't play um, Bring to Light at instant speed, I think I'll be okay. Hopefully they don't have a two mana counter spell. Sometimes they play a Mystical Dispute in there. Into light decks, oh, that's fine. Can't counter anyway, actually. But even if I even if I could, I probably wouldn't. That's not gonna pull them so far ahead that I can't win. I just want to draw a, another blue source so I can uh, play tide shaper and hold up counter spell. And it's deprive. Friendly neighborhood deprive. Okay, well, eventually that will be uh, that will be what I'm looking for. Yeah, is it? We're getting to the point, though, that I don't even know how valuable it really is to, uh, to spreading seize them. Because they already have Eyeless Forest Mountain. We cast White off of this. It's just not as, I think. Here, let's, uh, maybe, let's put Tide Shaper in play, I think. We, 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 I think we're going to gain more value by just cracking in, getting a little more damage. I'm feeling a um either a Kolagon's command or a Prismari command. Coming up, okay, Prismari command. Um there is a question card. I don't really care, so let's put this into play. It's a two-two. Pretty sweet stuff. I could counter it, but and actually I may want to deprive the next time because I may want to put the Murkwater back into play as a uh as a uh, different one. Tough fairy, you'll get caught up in the tough fairy. I'm gonna counter. I mean, I still got deprive as a backup. I hope, and they can't play land and then play their card. Tough fairy. Alrighty. Um. I mean, so I could play Luris, but then it's uh, shields down. Unless they, they have Niv. Let's just do this now and see what we got. Bam. Not bad. Uh, I think good things come to those who wait, though, so I will wait. So we can either play Force Negation on Bring to Light, or we can play... Uh... I don't know why they didn't put Yuri on the hand. They might be forgetting they even have it. You'll get caught up in the prismari. Yeah, that's fine. Next turn, well, yeah, next turn I can play Luris, and I don't actually have to buy anything back, so I'll just play Luris and hold up counter magic. Seems reasonable to me. Unmoored ego. 
Okay. Alrighty. If I draw a land, that'd be even better, because then I can buy back something. Okay. Well, let's just get Luris uh, out of here. And I would love to buy something back, but I'm, I'm not going to go shields down with the counter magic. In modern. <laughs> That's, uh, what's his name? Uh, Saffron Olives thing. In modern. Okay. I mean, they have a, they drew a removal spell in addition to Urion. Pull against command. Kaya's Guile, Kaya's Guile. Well, we're going to hope that they don't randomly, that they don't uh, naturally draw Niv. And, yeah, Murkwater for sure. Um, because we can handle Urion with the Dismember, we can handle um, light, uh, Bring the Light with Force Negation, but they have exactly one turn where they can play Niv. And, you know, in an 80 card deck, I mean, I don't know. I don't know. I don't know what's going on here. Uh, yeah, I'll force negation that. I mean, like, it's not a true removal spell, but it does draw them a card. It's just, it's just good. It bounces my card. It draws, draws them a card. It forces me to have to respect that for one turn. All right. So here's what we can do. I think Tide Shaper is where it's at. Yeah, Tide Shaper is where it's at. Bam, bam, moneygram. On the all over the Utopia Sprawl. Bam. Alright. Do, do they have the ability to, to create white if I I think I have if I think I hit the pillar. I don't think they have the ability to produce white, which is pretty good in my opinion for us. Okay. Oh, our shield's down on counter magic, but we're shields up on D Dismember for Urion. Actually, yeah, they can play Urion off of blue. They can't... Okay. Alright, well, they're really low on, um... They're really low on time, so... You know, maybe even if... I think... I think this worked. I don't know if we need repeal. I don't know if we need... Need repeal, but... Do we really... Yeah, but the problem is... It, we, yeah, we don't want to just... Play out all our creatures right into a wrath. Yep. Lurus, you'll get caught up in the... Lurus... Um, blah, 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 blah. Yeah, you know what? We have the ability to... We have the ability to take them off of their uh, Utopia Sprawl. So I guess they're just not even bothering to play it anymore. I'm just kidding. They, um... <laughs> Uh, well, the problem is, is I need to, uh, I need to draw cards, and I can always repeal it back to my hand later, if the need arises. They might play, uh, what's it called? Okay, good, I'm worried about, um, Veil of Summer. You might think the coast is clear now, but I do have the Tide Shaper, for what it's worth. Okay, I want to play Silverdale. Hmm. Oh. I think I can afford to wait one turn on Tide Shaper, and I don't want to... I don't want to play uh, Silver Gill if it means I can't play the Aether Bell. Now, of course, if they Prismari command me, um, that'll set me back. Uh, 
I mean, it looks like Chris Pine Command. Puts me in a little bit of an awkward spot because. Oh man, they got Niv. <sighs> That's annoying. I can both kill my artifact and. But there was nothing I could do anyway. I couldn't hold up Counterspell, so. It's like actual Niv instead of like give, bring to light. It's a little bit frustrating, not gonna lie. Why does a Veil of Summer that goes to the bottom? Okay, what do they put into their hand? Okay, can can you show me? Puts to Fairy Time Raveler. Like, what is wrong with this here? Like, I, I, I just scroll one little bit, and it, it doesn't let me read the whole thing. Yeah, it doesn't, doesn't let me read the whole thing, so whatever. I guess Nahiri the Harmbringer. At least I got another one of these. This is definitely the beginning of the uh, the age of difficulty for this deck. Man, the thing is, I got the tools to deal with this, but just you know, it's not drawing them in the order. And, and let's make no mistake, the Svelan is not going to make a difference in this spot. Okay, so in response to in response to this, I'm going to kill it so that they can't play a land and get any extra value beyond just drawing a card, which admittedly drawing a card is good. I guess that's a weird sort of balancing thing, where they come in a play trigger at least. I mean, it's a powerful comes in a play trigger, but at least, you know. Man, no, uh, no, what's it called, uh, um, Merfolk Trickster is also a little rough. Rough with, uh, not being able to tap this down. Man, also, like, this is getting a little annoying. I'm not gonna... I'm not gonna lie. Like, just no lands. Alright. I mean, I guess I sort of deprive. I could play some type of... I could play Echoing Truth, I guess. I mean, Echoing Truth does help with Rhino Tokens. It does help with Niv. I don't know if I need Deprive and... And counterspell. Alright, I don't know. Yeah, I mean, that's an option I could play. I don't know that I'd freaking play, uh. Um, I don't even. I mean, come on, like, uh, Echoing True Thing and Niv? That doesn't sound good. I don't know, but I don't even know if tapping it down one turn would make that big of a difference anyway. Prismari command so annoying. It's not it's not like too good or something. It's just so annoying. So they just they just snuck that nib in a turn before. But I couldn't play around it anyway, because think about it, I didn't have two blue mana. So I don't even know what I'm waiting for, to be honest. Like I, I don't know. I don't know what opponent just can't make up their mind on whatever it is they want to do. I think I'd rather not. But they probably have um, Veil of Summer now. I don't know. See, I'm not... I don't know. I think Force of Will... Now, the problem is the control decks are going to go freaking bananas. You know, the funny thing is, like, Wasteland and Force of Will actually both kind of work together in Legacy to make the format not just be dominated by, like, traditional big mana control deck type strategies, 
Wasteland, I think, is the fundamental reason that those big controller controlling, and also just the combo decks being so low to the ground. Yeah. Yeah. Spreading seas. Yeah. Yeah. I guess that's GG. Alright, match five. Alright, not a bad hand. Let's see. Let's uh, see. Man, that sucks that we lost that as a prowess matchup, though. Because, I mean, like, I, I, you know, you never know with uh, with Chalice and with Ratchet Bomb and, you know, and with Luris. Uh, it is possible to turn those around. But that misplay at the, um, the uh, end of game two was just horrendous. Uh, blah, blah, blah. Um, yeah, I'll just play Aether Vial. I mean, because there is some consideration to maybe, like, which type of pathway I play. Well, we are almost certainly going to play, play it as the blue one. Oh. Excuse the, uh... Okay, well, we have repeal for that. I don't, we know, I don't know that we need to repeal that, but maybe, maybe, maybe since we already have a vial ticking up, maybe it's, maybe it's fine. Yeah, let's repeal this. I mean, there's a lot of it, there's a lot to be said about just slowing the opponent down. That'd be crazy if they force negation to it. Okay. All right. Well, I mean, we got a lot of repeals, so we've got a lot to work with here. All right. What is this? Spirits. Yay. Um, yeah, so I'm going to play the Silver Gill now, because, yeah. <laughs> we could also put Loris to hand, but I think this is marginally better. I think we, I think this is a race. I don't think... And a race, I think, where where damage is more important than the life gain. All right, well, I'll repeal that again because they seem to be low on life. And I will produce quite an army with the Aether Vial. It, note that the result would have been the same if they had Aether Vial, just so I could keep bouncing it. And that's one of the advantages to repeal when you've got an Aether Vial. And they got an Aether Vial, or, or Mana Dork, whatever it is. This really helps you just pull far ahead and never look back. Alright. I'm gonna just dismember this now. I mean, because like I know we're gonna have to take four, but we would have taken two anyway. And I just, I don't want to get um, rattle changed. Rattle, rattle change is a uh, rattle chains is one of the um, best uh, best spirits in my opinion. I mean, surpri surprisingly, it's a uh, kind of a sleeper because it's not necessarily one of the cards you would identify as the best spirit. Uh, the end spirits. Zero. <sighs> Definitely Ratchet Bomb. For sure Ratchet Bomb. Force Negation is a little, little iffy. Now, because they probably do play with Collected Company, there is an argument to play Deprive. Deprive is usually dead against uh, everything else because of Cavern of Souls. Or not Deprive, I mean Counterspell. But that is... Like... Collected Company, at end of turn, can honestly just, just completely wreck you. Uh, for that reason alone, I'm going to play Counterspell. I don't know that we need all four. But honestly, I don't know that... I think Spreading Seas is kind of mediocre too, because they have islands anyway. Tide Shaver is at least a creature. 
The difference is humans doesn't have islands naturally most of the time, except for that one game where they do their one island in their entire deck. Um, anyway, so... Um, yeah, this, uh, well, this hand is Aether Vials. I'm about to discount it, because I... Alright, this hand looks like garbage, but I mean, the Aether Vial means maybe we can play the Silver and we can draw more cards. It's, we're not going to have a lot of time, they're going to put us under pressure, but... Hmm. Well, let's play this. Uh, if I drew a second mana, I might not, because I might prepare for the Ratchet Palm, destroy everything on one. Because of Loris, I think we are favored in the late game, so if it does come to it, I think I'll crack Ratchet Bomb and kill both their Aether Vial and our Aether Vial. Ideally with something else, I mean, I think with something else is kind of kind of a precondition. Ay, 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 ay! I, uh, I mean, I don't know, like, suddenly these... I think we're playing for Ratchet Bomb on 2, although we're all, we've also got a lot of stuff on 2. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. God, they've got a really good curve out. Well, at least we got two of these. Good thing we played out one. But still, that's kind of brutal. It's going to set me back. Mm, I need mana. I can get... I need, a, I need to kill something. I mean, they probably have rattle chains, in which case I guess I'll just scoop, but at the end of the day, I gotta kill something. Otherwise, I'm just gonna take too much damage. I mean, because on their turn, once they take up to three, I mean, even if they don't take up to three, they could have, um, they could have, uh, Spellcrawler, so, I don't know. Yeah, and Spellcrawler would just be, like, really not good. I mean, they think they beat us with their cards, but in reality, I think I would—I think I was just losing to myself, and I don't even know that it would have made a difference. Yep, we just lost to ourselves, folks. I mean, the opponent got to do stuff and got to be like, "Yes, I'm unbeatable." I'm just kidding. I don't think they thought about that, but like, hey, you know. Uh, but yeah, they got to like—they got to have fun, I guess. But the reality was, they might as well have just been playing blindfolded um, against a wall because, like, just. There was nothing was just gonna happen there. I mean, I guess I that was my fault for keeping, but I don't know. I, I, and historically, I think historically, I've I've been I've been satisfied with keeping those hands. I don't think there's a reason to change the sideboard strategy at all. Um, the Dubber Cavern of Souls was kind of like a, a middle finger to counter magic, but. Man, awkward hand. I don't know if we should keep, but like, yeah, I'll, I'll, I'll keep. And one of the whole reasons I can keep is actually because of Luris. Now, you could make the argument that maybe we end up suffering for that, but I don't have to mull to Oblivion, at least, drawn down to one land. I mean, like, you know, you can't, what are you supposed to do, right? You, you When you when you don't mull into one land hand with Aether Vial, then you just never draw another land, and then you, you just can't really get your footing in the game, and then they remove your stuff. Um, or, you know, you keep a hand without Aether Vial, but a lot of land. So, like, yeah. One thing I like about this Loras Folk build is that, is that unlike other versions of Merfolk, historically, um, it's, like, Aether Vial is almost always a good draw, even later in the game, or at least my more controlling Loras Folk deck. So we do have the mana to play to play Laris. <laughs> Turn one play.
I think because of Mausoleum Wanderer, we have to do this now. Otherwise, we could just wait, I think, until the end of their turn. Could just play Tide. Could play Tide Shaper. Alright, well, I mean, with two of these. Alright, so here's what I want to do. I want to play Tide Shaper for one. And then I want to play this. I'm just going to try to capitalize on me getting ahead with the repeals. Instead of repealing one Aether Vial. If it was just one, then maybe, but... I'm going to try to get ahead. Okay, and they can't spell quell yet, so maybe we... Maybe we run away with the game. With, uh... You know... Yeah, actually, so this this was a great way we could set up a decently good start. I'll probably bounce one of these Aether Vels, or maybe if it's a, a Mausoleum Wanderer, I'll bounce it. Okay, what's the matter? Yeah, we'll bounce one of these. Because i got nothing better to do, and might as well, you know. They didn't have any last turn, so I doubt they'll have it this turn, and that prevents them from playing another 2-drop. I think this is GG. I mean, I don't know, I guess they can play, uh, they can play, uh, Skyclave Apparition. But even if they do, I play another Lord. They have to tap out so they can't play Spellqueller. And then I have, yeah, 3 4, four so it's still lethal. Yeah, they have Skyclave Apparition, it's fine. They've still got lethal. And I don't know, I don't know what they could have on 2 mana. They could have Shacklegeist. But I think they're I think they're still taking lethal. Yeah, they're still taking lethal even with Scott Shacklegeist. This matchup can be kind of frustrating because honestly, a lot of it comes down to who's on the play, and also a lot of it comes down to um, a lot of it comes down to uh, um, yeah, just like if you've got stuff like you know for us repeal if they've got like Aether Vial, I don't know. But you know, hey, that's a uh, um, we took the game. I mean, it's funny because I think Spirits is a, a little bit of a bad matchup. It's winnable, but I think Spirits is slightly on the bad matchup. I think Five Color Niv, historically for me, has been a good matchup. Not like an amazing matchup, but... And, and honestly, it still could have been if they... Well, the problem is I just was not drawing a second blue mana in that game that they destroyed my Aether Vial. So honestly, it, was, it wasn't the, uh, it wasn't the what's it called, uh, Prismari Command. It was just, it was just, um, the inherent... And we're not even playing, um, you know... 12, only 12 blue sources. We're playing a full 16 again. It just didn't happen, so... Anyway, whatever. Hey, I'm satisfied with this. I don't know, I might try Glorious Folk again a bit. I mean, like, this is the same kind of results we've been getting with, uh... with, um... you know, what you call it, uh... uh... with Solitude. Um... No, sorry, not Solitude. I did try Solitude a bit, um, but... I don't know, just... I would, the card advantage is very... disadvantage is very concerning. We're not like we're not like the crashing footfalls deck that just generates obscene card advantage to make up for it. But no, I mean, uh, Spielan. That's it. Um, kind of same middling results lately we've been getting with Spielan. Um, but you know, anyway, I guess we'll save the rest for the com or the commentary for the post league wrap up. All right. Okay, post league wrap up. Let's. Uh, you know, I might I might this one might be a little bit quick, but look. Long story short, we didn't set the world ablaze. And we still got a 3-2, so we haven't necessarily broke out of the 3-2 zone with that, with that we've been with uh, Svelin. But I still was surprisingly impressed, and I, I'm, I, since I haven't necessarily given, um, I haven't necessarily fully explored Luris Folk and really gone all in and really, like, given given it, um, I've only been on, in the grand scheme of things, I've only been on Luris Folk for a relatively short period of time. Um, you know, of course, obviously I've been on Svelin for even a short amount of time, but I just think, like, there's always Sveelin to, to, hold, to fall back on. It's it's always going to be there. Also, tons of other people are going to be testing that too. Um, but like, maybe it's just it was just a little too early for me to uh, for me to totally abandon Luris and assume that there wasn't something there. I I do like it. I do like I do like what it brought to the deck. A different angle of attack. The life gain sometimes was nice. Heck, the ability to just to just uh, not lose four life all the time to dismember and be able to manage my life total better that way that was nice. 
um, the, the really a really A plus Manlian from uh, Creeping Tar Pit. I mean uh, Primo. Um, you know Ratchet Bomb being, being you know having being able to recur Ratchet Bomb or, or other stuff that Ratchet Bomb takes with it. You know from your graveyard with Loris also came up with against humans. I mean well actually I don't know that Ratchet Bomb really came up against humans, but at least the potential to do that because they, they didn't really have much removal, so our Loris kind of went nuts. And probably the game would have just been over if I could have started recurring Ratchet Bombs. Um, yeah, I mean, all of it was good. All of it was good. And one of the most important things is I enjoyed these games, and I did feel like like I had more control in the sense that at least I wasn't just drawing a bunch of lands and just losing to the deck, you know? So, yeah, I always had something to do with the mana. I could always pay three and put Luris to my hand. I could, always, you know, playing Luris was almost always a power play. Um sinking, you know, three mana into the creeping tar pit, and then attacking, you know, tapping and attacking, so you have a total of four mana, but being able to sink, like, four mana into using the creeping tar pit, um, you know, cracking in for three damage, um, you know, whenever I had the mana available, just always had something to do with my mana. That and that was a good feeling, just always having something to do with my mana. Uh, also, it just felt, also, you know, I do think these uh, pathways might be better than, better than you think. Um, yeah, these pathways actually, these pathways might have been pretty good, you know? I mean, like, they didn't really screw me over that much. I, d I definitely, I didn't lose a lick of life uh, from any of the, uh, from any of these lands. Um, I do, I was able to cast Luris off of this at least once, if I remember correctly. Um, yeah, and uh, sure, most of the time they came into play as islands, but definitely the ability to come into play as Swamp did come in handy at least once. And it was nice that we, you know... So they felt pretty free, they felt pretty good. Obviously we didn't get hosed by Blood Moon, but, you know. Um, again, we do have the Tide Shapers and the Spreading Seas. We haven't, we didn't get to see how that might help bail us out. Um, so the only thing, though, here, honestly, is that I, I really missed Merfolk Trickster. And you know what I'm going to try next? You're not going to believe it. I'm going to take out Lord of Atlantis, and I'm going to put in Trickster. There are no Sacred Cows. I am always happy. I mean, I'm trying whatever I think might give me an edge, unless it's playing less than four cards. I'm just kidding. I mean, the problem is it's just so hard to objectively test, um, you know, how how um, how changing the numbers like affects you, like unless you take really rigorous objective objective like analytical type, um, I guess measurements. I don't know what the right term is. Then it's just hard to test it. At least playing a four of lets you test the individual cards very well. Anyway, I'm gonna go away and go back. Yeah, I just was. <laughs> I just flipped to the to another deck just because if I don't save, like if I just quit Magic Online from here, which I might, then uh, then um, then it might it might not save the change because uh, sometimes like I think you have to you have to change to something else within Magic Online, but for some reason if you do, if you just exit Magic Online, it doesn't auto save. I don't know. Um, but uh, look, at the end of the day, honestly, one of the only archetypes that Merfolk Trickster is worse against is Combo. Think about it, against Aggro, this is usually way better than a Lord because you get to slow them down. And you're usually playing for the late game where usually you have time to draw into like one of your four of Lords anyway. Um, against uh, against control decks, interactive control I mean, like a lot of times you're trying to play around their counter magic, trying to play around their removal, and just this being instant speed, an instant speed vanilla 2-2 is actually surprisingly good. I mean, you know, that also gets buffed by the Master. It's weird that Master is like the only Merfolk payoff <laughs> now. But we may only need one Merfolk payoff. Um, so it really, it's only against combo decks, you know, like Scape Shift or Tron, or I don't even know, like Ad Nauseam. But like, we don't really see much Ad Nauseam anymore. And like, even against, even against like the Scape Shift deck, some of, some of them play Titan and are more like, just, just combo you quickly. But some of them are uh, more interactive. And the interactive ones, you know, definitely Trickster has its advantages. But also like, one of the things is that, you know, Tron was one of the biggest boogeymans that really forced you to kind of have to, kind of have a lot of, uh, that force you to be faster, and without Tron in the format as much, uh, but more importantly also with um, with a Tide Shaper and Spreading Seas and Force Negation, I have to think that my Tron matchup's gonna be, gonna be pretty good, and I may not necessarily have to like, you know, completely, um, completely go nuts with the Lord Rush as much. I mean, I could be wrong, but anyway, um, yeah, look, the only, at the end of the day, um, if, if this ends up if this ends up, you know, showing promise, uh, then I'll probably, uh, I'll probably, uh, obviously tweet about it. Um, I might record. I'm not sure if I'm going to record the next game I play with this. I'm not sure if the next league is going to be with Merfolk, but um, but you know, at the end of the day, 
at the end of the day, if the, if the next time you see me playing Merfolk, it's with a, uh, it's with eight lords, and probably that means this was a failed experiment. But I think it's worth, I think it's worth trying out. I mean, look, we'll just see, okay? We'll, we'll see. We gotta, we gotta try. But I missed Merfolk Trickster, and I mean, you know, it can deal with those tokens, and you know, I mean, those like uh, construct tokens too, which didn't really come up. We didn't see any Urzas this game, but. I don't know. We'll see. Um, hey guys, if you, if, if um, y'all folks like this uh, content, then please like and subscribe. Uh, you know, send, <laughs> do, do smash that like button, leave a comment, all that good stuff. Uh, yeah, until next time, I'm still going to enjoy trying, trying to make each of these archetypes the best they can possibly be. Uh, you know, at least how I, at least for me, it seems like it's, you know, what I perceive to be the best. And you know, based, and hopefully we'll we'll continue to get good results. I mean, three two. You know, it's not it's not setting the world on fire, but the word on the world on fire. But it'll I'll take it. Um, and I and I feel like I have the room to improve. I mean, that is a prowess matchup. That was that was uh, brutal to make that mistake. We might have been able to win that one. We might have been able to win game three. We might have been able to go four one. You know, might 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 might. But but at the end of the day, um, I did feel like the deck delivered. I I may not may, I may not have always delivered, but I felt like. The deck felt smooth. I, I liked it. Anyway, we'll see, okay? Until next time.